Yeah. So we're going to do the, the next talk. Uh, next one is from Michael, which is going to talk about bringing Collabora online to your web app. So perfect, perfect. Well, thank you for coming. Ten seconds. Okay, well, let's count down. Four, three, you know, I don't know. Thank you for coming. So, so Collabora Online, uh, who knows what it is? I mean, if you know what it is, I don't have to. Okay, well, fair enough. There are a few people that don't, I'm sorry. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, collaborative editing. Imagine Google Docs or uh, Microsoft Office 365, although probably you'll get a headache if you imagine that for too long. Um, so we do uh, document, spreadsheet, slides, viewing, collaborative editing, uh, phones, tablets, web, all that stuff. Um, brilliant interoperability. We are the Microsoft file format lovers. You know, look at us. We, we, we have to interoperate with all this wonderful legacy stuff. RTF, the legacy of the last standards war. You know, you may think ODF is a standards war, you know, but RTF is the previous standards war, and it still lives on in many governments, amazingly. Um, PDF, Visio, all sorts of other filters uh, in there uh, are possible. And it does WYSIWYG rendering. Um, that's quite important because uh, other people don't necessarily. Like Office, uh, Word Online doesn't do WYSIWYG anymore. It's back to the Word 5 era of not being able to see how your document lays out. And I guess the key, oh, uh, the key thing is that I should get my display to actually uh, project the slides properly so that you can actually see them all. Uh, that, that's probably the, uh, uh, the key deliverable at this stage. Uh, what is that? Is that? The new one's going to be 1280 by 800. OK, perfect. Better, I think. Mm -hmm. Yes, and so it should uh, integrate on-premise with your, your existing EFSS. So, so if you just drop it into one of these things, it should work nicely. If you're a learning type person, Moodle or something like this, Mattermost, um, if it doesn't do it uh, yet, then, well, you can come to my talk and I'll show you how. Um, so the architecture is really a bet on CPU threads and network getting cheaper. We run a chunk of this stuff on the server. Uh, and so to install that, you then just uh, uh, grab a code image. You've got packages, you've got Docker images uh, for, for every conceivable Linux distribution, of course, source code. And uh, yeah, so you... Um, yeah, you plug it in and uh, connect it yourself and, and fiddle with your, your web app. Sometimes uh, people, people like to just convert documents. So if you want to thumbnail documents or, or convert documents from, you know, uh, flat ODS to PDF for invoicing, uh, we can do that very easily as well. So there's a nice REST API there. Yeah, so, yeah. But, but the, the integration is really just an iframe. You, you, can, uh, you can check it out and run it, of course, uh, like that. Um, but, but getting data into it, so, so this, this, kind of, um, this kind of thing, uh, this kind of thing. OK, so, so the demo stuff that we give you basically loads files off your file system, which is mostly what you don't want to do. You want to be able to surf through this nice API. So in terms of understanding this, um, this is a very simple piece of software. We require only libc, and that's pretty much it, of a Linux system. We have no dependencies once you include, you know, draw a box around the whole bundle. Um, so we don't need a database. We don't really need the file system very much at all. And, uh, but we do need to get data. So how do we do that? Well, we store that in, say, Nextcloud or own cloud. And we do that through a REST interface, which combines authentication and storage. So we don't do any authentication. I know nothing about XAML, uh, and I'm very happy about that. And I know very little about object databases. And I'm extremely happy about that. And, and uh, you know, metadata stores and clustering. My hope is that you've done all that already. And, and, you know, or you, you have a plan for this kind of thing and that we don't need to care because you can give us a token and we will give it back to you to prove that it's still us, you know? And, and that's, that's basically what WAPI does. So there are two things. There's a, there's a WAPI source, um, which effectively defines the file or the stream it is um, and its version and so on. And then there's a, an authentication thing. We basically do a, a, a post into the iframe uh, that sends those two things separately. Um, and then what? OK, so, so we want to get a file. We call a get on your storage. We do a web get. It's that hard. OK, and we pass these credentials back, and you decide. Um, and to save, we do a post. Again, tricky stuff. Um, and then there's a, there is a slightly tricky method, check file info here. And this allows us to do all sorts of cool things. So it gives, of course, at root, we could just fail on the get to give the file in terms of permissions management. You could go, eh, can't give it to you. But wouldn't it be nice if you could have read-only, various different permissions, you know? Can they comment? Can they edit? Can they redline? Um, wh what's their name? Where's their avatar URL so we can do this sort of thing? And all of that kind of metadata uh, tends to come back from a check file info. Um, so there is this security token. Obviously, I, I guess I, I mentioned that before. We don't care. To us, it's a totally opaque string. Um, but it shouldn't have anything to do with the document. 
So document stuff on one side and user stuff on the other. Because everyone that collaborates inside the same document has the same WAPI source. And that's very important when you come to uh, spreading this over clusters and so on. Everyone needs to end up on the same node. So yeah. Oh, uh, there's a discovery, but honestly, this doesn't matter. Like, whatever. You, you, you can look stuff up in the discovery and do clever things or not, but eh, who cares? Um, you can just do it directly if you like, hard code it, you know? At least, at least for a prototype. Um, so yeah, the check file info endpoint. Yep, and then you can just get a hello world very easily. You have a simple, an HTML document that looks, well, a bit like this. It's not very big. Uh, as you can see, and there's a form action here, and it's got this, uh, you know, all these details that go across, and uh, bingo, uh, there you are. Um, yeah, I think that's pretty much pretty much the works. Now, of course, once you've got it embedded, and it's looking beautiful, as it does, um, you then might want to, uh, to play around with it. Unfortunately, I didn't have time to test my live demo earlier, so it may probably well not work. Um, so I might skip that for reasons of time. Um, but uh, essentially, you can post messages inside and outside and across the frames uh, to do all sorts of um, exciting things. There's a little demo here uh, that you can grab out of the source and uh, configure as, as instructed. Uh, so actually, we, we configure it to do cross-site scripting checking by default. So y you have to add localhost into the, uh, the configuration uh, so it can trust itself uh, to do what it does in the demo, uh, which is that slightly inelegant thing. Um, and then, yeah, then you can play with it. So you can you know, hide your menu bars if you don't want menu bars, and you can fiddle around with stuff. You can even inject arbitrary um, calls to scripts in here. So you can send a Python script that runs in the back end, and you can generate a form or a report or do database queries at the site. You know, there's all sorts of things you can do with the embedded Python there um, if you want and, and drive that from the UI. And so some people, uh, we have a customer that uses this for uh, doing, like, I want this area of a spreadsheet. I want to select a spreadsheet, and I want to dump this somewhere else. I want to dynamically move data into uh, these things and automate them. Um, so that's, that's all stuff that you can... Um, you can do, and we have a vast scripting API, obviously, it's like a thousand, um, a thousand interfaces with God knows how many methods uh, that you can use, use from that. Um, yeah, so you can also add your own toolbar, uh, buttons and things, people like custom buttons. Did I mention you can theme it and skin it and CSS it to the nth, obviously? Um, yeah, um, so yes, it's obviously worth uh, waiting till the JavaScript is loaded. I think one of the, the great benefits of uh, JavaScript is not knowing what order your JavaScript files are uh, loaded in and then what they're going to do when they load in a different order and not being able really to test that either. So, you know, JavaScript is just the most wonderful mess in the world when it comes to programming anything. Um, it's just a living hell. I don't know, you know, like, I mean, I really, it was just... Yeah, words fail me, uh, you know, piling up all this stuff. And then the good news is that they create these tools that make it very easy to upgrade bits of the middle of it, where upgrade means break all of the invariants I coded uh, up above, so obscure things no longer work. But anyway, um, I digress. Either way, wait till the JavaScript's loaded before sending your post message, otherwise you, uh, yeah, you, you might have a bad experience. So don't do that. Um, good. So I, I mentioned the check file info thing. There's a whole load of uh, things that here, like, so... So one of the things we have is a thing called secure view. I forget if I got a slide about it. But the idea is that don't let the document leave your site. You know, you have employees in, in, in wherever they are, uh, North Korea, because you employ North Koreans. It's a great, great move. And, um, yeah, you don't want to send them the whole document. You just want to show, show them it. And you want to, you know, watermark it so that you can be sure it's them. And if they take pictures of the screen, you know, it's got their name all over it, this kind of thing. Um, so you can turn off printing, downloading, saving, copy-paste, all of this stuff, because that all happens server-side. Um, and so you can just hard disable this stuff, uh, which is kind of cool. And anyway, so there's all sorts of these different options you can do, uh, copy-paste. Uh, and because, actually, you're sending pixels to the client, not actual content, it's relatively easy to do that. Like, there really is no, the DOM is all on the server, not in the, not in the client, which has many advantages in terms of performance. And you, know, you want to do the slow thing, not on your mobile phone, but on the fast server in, in, in the data center, probably. Uh, what do we have here? Enable owner termination. See, I don't know. Kendi would know that. This is Kendi, who's, who's awesome. And, you know, hey, <laughs> development manager for Collabora Online. You know, look at that. Yes, yeah, so, um, Extra users. Oh, yes, yeah, so your, you know, your avatar and your email and all this sort of thing. So you can then start to integrate with your crazy chat and la, la, la. You can do all that sort of nice, uh, nice integration stuff. Um, yeah. CSPs, aren't they wonderful for uh, broken images? And uh, watermarking stuff for watermarking tiles. 
Oh, yeah. I think this is a great thing, you know. It's, uh, it's very important. So let me show you some of the other, other people that have done this, just to prove that it's not impossible, you know. Uh, uh, so Arrow are great. They, they are Java programmers, so that's good. And actually, having used JavaScript, you discover that Java is a beautiful programming language, which is funny, isn't it? You know, because I always thought it was a Baroque mess, but anyway, they were. Um, so eGroupware, uh, you know, so we're doing some stuff here, uh, you know, just embedded into their, their tool, uh, their frame. Um, Colab, who uh, are a company that's in Switzerland that do a secure on-site, on-premise hosted uh, stuff. And NextCloud, obviously, you just heard Yossi's talk, a beautiful integration there. Uh, with all sorts of things, avatars and templates and all sorts of, uh, all sorts of nice features, sharing built in and so on. Our own cloud, similarly, and another PHP app. Um, Pydeo is, again, a PHP, but another integration there. Aruv, some random other uh, you know, company producing stuff, doing this. A Mattermost for your education, uh, educational needs, uh, chatting needs, rather. Um, this is not a very pretty integration. I need to talk to Corey when I see him, uh, if I see him. Uh, to try and fix that. And uh, we love to help people do that. So, um, you know, when you're struggling and it doesn't work, uh, it, it might not be you, you know. So, so uh, c come, and, come and grab me or, or someone else, and we can help you get this integrated. And then, you know, there's all sorts of commercial stuff around there that we can uh, talk about to make this uh, economically sustainable open source engagement, let's say. Um, what else? So Collabora Line 4.2. So, so this is sort of shipping in code now, but these are basically new features we've added in the last uh, six, nine, nine months, something like that. Uh, so what do we see here? Well, um, so we've got the sidebars now in Impress. So this is uh, being tunneled through from effectively the PC application. And we're moving these to use some native uh, widgets, I think, probably in the next year or so. Um, but hey, it works really nicely for now. So you have really quite rich functionality there, all of these different panels you can be fiddling with the shadow of your text box and so on. It's just a huge a wealth of functionality there. Um, animations. I don't think anyone else has uh, configurable animations in their online office suite at the moment. Um, you know, and all of, the, all of the key stuff that you want then around presentations uh, so that you can, you can actually make a presentation. Master pages. Master page editing. Google Docs doesn't do it. Microsoft Office doesn't do it. Uh, none of our competition does. You know, so it's just... But, again, bringing that richness of the functionality from the office suite through to the... Uh, to the browser. And our hope, of course, is here that we, we end up with a full function office suite in, in the browser that's easy to deploy centrally. And it's not just then selling own cloud to someone. It's, it's also getting rid of that legacy PC installed nastiness uh, as well. So you can start to actually, you know, in good conscience, move to a fully web delivered, extremely secure, on-premise hosted, uh, digitally sovereign uh, solution, uh, which is nice. Uh, what else? A uh, nice new chart editing sidebar, so you can click on your charts and get different, different types of charts. Uh, conditional format, so often people have these drop-downs and they, they claim conditional formatting is done. You know, pick one and be happy. Um, but of course, conditional formatting is insanely complicated, and you know, wouldn't it be nice if you could uh, fix it so it looked like you want it? Um, function wizards, so you can remember what the 17th parameter to that really bad method does. Um, and so on. Uh, color correction of images, uh, nice UI handles for sizing tables and selecting them, improved spreadsheet stuff for auto fills. Uh, wouldn't it be nice if you write January, February and you fill it down, it goes March, April, May instead of January, February, January, February, you know, that, that kind of thing. Um, ordinal suffix, first, second, drag it down, third, fourth, fifth, you know, th these things are the basics that our competitors are just, uh, anyway, they don't have the rich engine behind the scenes to do, because that seems easy, isn't it? First, second, third, fourth, fifth, but actually when you get to you know, the plethora of languages we support, uh, 119 live translations for languages, 145 people working, 4,500 translators working on uh, translating the code base. Things are more complex. Um, Pop-ups for uh, URLs uh, to make them nice. Um, and then bringing all of that to mobile. So previously, we, uh, we tried to provide more desktop experience on the phone so you could zoom dialogues and things. It was pretty yucky. Um, so we went for a more feature week. As in, we, we, we limit the features to, say, what our competition do. Uh, and that's a bit crazy. But anyway, so, so a viewer, by default, uh, you see some of these, these sort of fairly familiar, you know, click the button to play, play the presentation, undo, redo. This is all there, all open source. It's in the App Store, Collabora, Office, Mobile, Beta. You can install it and play with it. Um, and then, you know, this kind of one-handed, you know, big, chunky stuff, scrollable. But these are actually the sidebars. Um, but wrapped and redone with uh, native uh, HTML widgets with CSS uh, and, you know, nice ergonomics, hopefully. Uh, similarly, I showed you the chart type sidebar earlier. This is the same guy, 
uh, but now scrollable and hierarchical and, uh, and nested, and similarly for these, these guys too. Uh, pretty menus. Um, yeah, lots of individual features. I'm running out of time slowly. Uh, we'll have some time for questions. Um, new theming. So, uh, yeah, this is a nice bug. I should get a better screenshot. But anyway, the idea is you can use SVG to theme the native stuff so it looks crisper and prettier and works, uh, works better. Um, doing a similar thing for iOS for tablets. Um, done with Amphinis, who is a cool partner of ours, um, in Switzerland. And uh, one of the great things about this partner was that we sold the product with them in good faith to the customer who then decided they wanted it to work offline. And that's a bit difficult for a uh, you know, just kind of minor feature uh, that you need to add. So anyway, they got a free port of LibreOffice to iOS uh, for the price of... Uh... Anyway, let's not do that again. Um, but there you go. You've got you know, to please the customer, haven't you, uh, at the end of the day. Um, so uh, we do all sorts of cool monitoring. So Prometheus text-based polling stuff. I don't know why people like to poll. I think it sucks, but polling is, is cool. Um, I prefer the WebSocket thing we implemented first so you can get live data coming at you about documents opened, who's done it, and whatever from your cluster. So the cluster will connect out to your monitoring server, give you a WebSocket, and let you control it. Um, lots of other stuff. Much richer copy and paste things, new dialogues. Uh, yeah, lots of anonymized logging. So you add all this nice logging so you can work out what's going on, and then you encrypt it all so you can't anymore uh, with uh, GDPR compliance, they call this. Um, obviously, you have third-party penetration testing to make sure it's all you know, safe and good, uh, better performance, PDF rendering, simpler code, fewer threads. Um, yeah. Ah. So digital sovereignty, don't let your documents out of your site. H highly secure, lock it up on your premise, right? Stick your document in its own CH root with a Almost no file system, nothing executable in there. Set comp BPF, filtering all the system calls around it. Um, underneath that, you know, load crash testing. In, you know, we've got a better coverity score than the Linux kernel, 0, 0.00. Questionable if that's useful. Um, LibreOffice kit. So, so basically, what about this giant thing? Is it, is, is it secure? We have never had a security issue uh, in, inside these documents that could, could have broken out like that. So it's, it's pretty, kind, pretty cool, uh, and you can really be uh, confident in that. Here's a picture of a secure view. I don't know if you can see the watermark in the background here. Uh, but, yeah, the, the contrast is not ideal, but you can see it here. Of course, we try and work on all, all kinds of background. And this is a really simple, elegant model uh, against Microsoft's. Microsoft's model for DRM and, and sharing documents is that they sign everything. They sign your, you know, the TPA, their key ships in your BIOS. They sign your bootloader. They sign your operating system. They sign your office suite. And then they'll give you the document, uh, the key for your document from their Azure cloud, so you can unlock your document and be able to read it, because they're now convinced that your whole stack from the hardware up is actually safe. I don't think that's a great model in terms of digital sovereignty. I think having a single American company hold all the keys for your documents and sign everything is, is just not very elegant, let's say. It's not very simple. It can't be federated, and it has this massive central point of failure. And we can do better in a simple way that's federated, that you own, that you control, you can decide who you trust, who you collaborate with, and who you give what permissions to. And we think that's extremely elegant. Uh, our competition, incidentally, uh, claim to do some of these things, uh, but it's all enforced in JavaScript on the client. Uh, so hard to circumvent by pressing F12, obviously. Um, yeah, highly scalable, very simple architecture, no database, no separate message bus, no shared data storage, scalability, one-on-one -on -one are using it for millions of users, literally. Um, yeah, composable operations suck. If you want to know more, talk to me about it. 45,000 uh, users, well, actually, don't talk to me about it. Just consider sorting a spreadsheet and changing a cell and trying to work out what the implications of changing the cell are by walking the entire dependency graph that could be vast to see if this cell change affects anything that might impact the sort. And now try composing these operations across each other. OK? And when you've sorted that out, you can come and tell me how great operational transforms are. Um, good. So we just do everything live as it happens. And that turns out to be simple, slick, bulletproof, and not have any, oh, I can't synchronize across my cluster properly. Um, so in terms of CPU usage, this is pretty simple. 45,000 users using it there. Uh, spikes of about 6K users online uh, occasionally. Uh, it runs on the spare hardware left over at the side of the massive Nextcloud cluster. So, like, the balance of hardware that's spent versus the database metadata storage is trivial. Uh, do, it, do it in the data center, not on your mobile, if it's complicated. Um, and that's it. So, our mission is to make open source rock. And hopefully we're doing it. We'd love to work with you to integrate with your EFSS.
So thank you. You've been very good. I think we have about half a minute for questions, do we? Is that right? Uh, no? Five? We have five minutes for questions. Ah, I'm very happy. That's good. I could have gone more slowly. Let me tell you more conclusions in a minute. Sir, your question. Uh, you, mentioned, you mentioned that you can uh, style the, the whole layout yourself sure. using CSS. Um, is that true? I see you doubting right now because if, since everything is rendered on the server side, how are you going yeah, yeah. to yeah, yeah. You know, fix that? Yes. So, so obviously you don't want to style your document, the bit inside the frame. Well, maybe you do, but you should use the Office Suite to do that. So rendering that on the server is not a problem. In terms of uh, theming the widgets, there's, there's SVG for doing the icons that you can f fiddle around with. Um, that's fine. It's a subset of SVG because we don't really want the animated JavaScripted stuff running on the server there, obviously. And so it's a, a very restricted subset. So I, I'm, you can't CSS everything is the answer. But on the mobile, it's much more. Kenny, can give a good answer, Kenny. Yeah. <laughs> An additional answer to that: there's uh, exactly a presentation about this, uh, like in in the room that is uh, open dev room. Uh, open, open document and editors and dev room. Dev room. Yep. Uh, that uh, exactly tells you how. Okay. So yes, if you want to go to that, Pedro, who is our, our designer, will show you how to do the whole works. And if not, read his slides afterwards. Um, so yes, so there's a lot you can do. Um, and there are, there are some limits, too, particularly around the legacy dialogues. I think in a year, as we start to move those to being more uh, client-side rendered HTML dialogues, then knock yourself out. Let's, let's do every bad idea of blink tags and you know, whatever else and then just pile it in. You know, the, uh, but yeah, yeah, it's, it's easy, easy to do. Good question. Another question? Yes. Sir. You're yeah. contemplating um, more of it next cloud. Sure. Mm -hmm. The best way to ensure it's good, even if you're your paid customer. Oh, a paid customer is very easy. You just mail it to support at collaborateoffice.com. Uh, oh, yes. How, how, how do I file report uh, bugs? So if you just mail us, it effectively creates a ticket as you do that. And we track that ticket. And you also support the, the integration with the Nextcloud? Yes, to a, yeah. to a degree. Yeah, so that's kind of split between us and Nextcloud. <laughs> if you're having problems with that, poke, poke me. Um, just, just email me or mail, uh, yeah, just mail me, it's probably best. And uh, then we'll, uh, we'll sort it out. But yes, yes. They move, it, it next time moves at a great pace and innovates quickly, let's say. So I think there's, uh, yeah, there's, there's, you know, things we can, um, there's things we can fix there. But yeah, do, love to, uh, yeah, you, I'll give you a card in a second. Other questions? Sir? A little bit building on that question. Shoot. Uh, for example, I don't know where it's going on, but I just want to verify whether it's Sure. So, 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 is it working fine? You want to do monitoring, essentially? I just said, I said, I started the source. Yes. Yep. So, when you do a make run like this, um, it gives you these, these wonderful things here. And so if you just uh, launch the link, then you have, you know, um, an office suite, you know. And uh, if you uh, uh, have a new window, you can do this, and you can see, you know, collaborative editing or, you know, whatever it is you like, right? So, so that works reasonably. And, of course, there's an admin console. So if you, as I say, if you like the whole, here's a whole load of quite boring variables thing, you can do that. Or you can go to the, uh, the live admin console that will tell you there's, you know, this many documents open and who's, who's doing it. And, okay, so this integration is not cool for the files. Um, and, and the users are online and so on. Okay. Uh, potentially. Um, the problem with this command, of course, is for a development edition. We're not really eager for people to be able to load things off the file system normally. Um, so that's kind of disabled in, in builds. But you can go to the admin console. If you're a glutton for punishment, and I am, um, uh, so if you give a user one kill, which is a great, great API, uh, then it essentially dumps its entire internal state, all of its sockets, all of the file descriptors, who they go to, uh, what's in the tile cache, you know, when it last saved, all the permissions about it. And that's quite nice. Um, for various reasons, this is used to debug complex threading situations. And in consequence, it takes almost no locks. Um, 
almost all the time, that's absolutely fine. And it's extremely useful when someone's deadlocked in a thread. However, it may crash your server. So I, I, it doesn't crash mine, at least very often. But uh, just be aware that sending a user one is extremely powerful, sharp developer tool. <laughs> yeah. Sounds good? Excellent. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.